Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. In this week's overview brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines, Jim Plunkett and I get you ready for a divisional matchup against the Denver Broncos. I sit down with the dynamic running back Jalen Richard and Chris Townsend joins head coach John Gruden in the film room as they recap week one action. All that and more on the Silver and Black Show starting right now. I think Case Keenum at the end of the year might be the, the number one acquisition in football. I think he's a great quarterback. What he did last year, the performance he laid down in Minnesota, um, he solidifies them at that position. They struggled last year. They went through a lot of different quarterbacks. Uh, I know he had a couple interceptions last week, but this kid can really play. He's a great competitor. They have outstanding receivers. And look, they've always had a great defense. And uh, when they have had stability at quarterback, they've proven they can win a world championship. So. We'll have our hands full, I know that. We're excited to get ready. From a mentality standpoint, I love love playing the best. I mean, that's why you grow up as a kid, you know, wanting to make it to the NFL because you want to play against the best, you know. And, uh, you know, playing against Aaron, uh, you know, and then playing against Vaughn and, and those guys this week, it's always fun. The Raiders on the road for the first time in 2018. Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. As always, I'm your host, Nicole Zalumis, alongside our two-time Super Bowl champion, Jim Plunkett. Jim, a tall order for the Raiders as they head to mile high. They're facing a Denver team that barely got that win against the Seahawks. And then the Raiders are trying to bounce back after a bitter loss at home. How difficult of a task is this going to be for the Silver and Black? Well, it's always tough to, uh, to play on the road. Uh, Broncos beat uh, a good Seattle team last week. And uh, they seem to have found a new quarterback in Case Keenum. So, you know, they have a lot going for them right now. They're very optimistic. They struggled last year. Seem to be a much better team this year. Well, and it doesn't get any easier for the Raiders as they face Aaron Donald week one, Vaughn Miller week two, and that leads us to our headlines. Bring on Vaughn. The Broncos' former Super Bowl MVP terrorized the Seahawks last week to the tune of six tackles, three sacks, and two forced fumbles. Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson even compared Von Miller to the likes of LeBron James, saying that no matter what you do, he's going to make plays. Jim, what makes Von so special, and how do you make sure he doesn't just ruin the offense's day? Well, you know, Von Miller's got speed, strength going for him. Uh, he comes off the edge incredibly fast. Tackles have a tough time getting position on him. He seems to get leverage on anybody who's trying to block him. You know, the best way to take care of him, or slow him down at least, is maybe put a back on him, have him chop him once in a while, make sure that, you know, he knows that the back's going to be there. So he, he treads softly. But it's a challenge for that tackle because most of the time he is going to have to block him one-on-one. -on -one. You're just going to have to find a way to do it, and you've got to be determined. He says, I'm not going to let him touch my quarterback. Well, our second headline talks about the other quarterback, the one the Raiders will be facing, and that's Make Your Case. The journeyman quarterback joined the Broncos during the 2018 offseason. This is going to be Case Keenum's sixth year in the league and his fourth different team. Last year, he led the Minnesota Vikings to a 13-3 record and a playoff run that included one of the wildest endings in recent memory. Jim, what are you expecting from Case Keenum come Sunday? Well, he's a veteran quarterback who came in from Minnesota, as you mentioned. Had a great game last week. Threw for 72.5%, 329 yards, and three touchdowns. You know, I really think he's become of age. Always the way to take care of quarterbacks is to put pressure on him. And you've got to find a way to do that. We didn't put much pressure on Jared Goff. He had uh, a lot of time to throw the football and find his receivers. That can't be the case this week. Uh, the way uh, Keenum is playing right now, uh, pressure is the key. Well, we're going to be focusing on pressure. We're also going to be mentioning altitude a lot, and that leads us to our third headline, Mission at Mile High. Another chapter in the rivalry continues as the Raiders head to Denver, Colorado, and the stadium that is notorious for its rigorous altitude. The Silver and Black look to reverse their recent fortune when visiting Mile High as they've dropped five of their last six games there. Jim, you've experienced this environment. What is it going to be like for the Raiders as they head into the stadium? Well, you know, still the biggest challenge they have is the opponent. You know, how good uh, is Denver going to be? Uh, but regards to the altitude, a lot of these kids, a lot of young players we have on this football team haven't experienced mile high. Uh, and sometimes it, it gets to them. They have difficulty breathing. Uh, and so you're probably going to see a few of the players on the sidelines sitting on the bench with a, a, a mask over their An face taken tank. and getting some oxygen, you know. Uh, you know, but that being said, you know, it's a raucous crowd. They get all over you. It's not like the old mile high stadium where they were right on top of you. It's a, it's a much bigger venue. But they're, they're as loud as can be. And so, you know, it, it may get some of the kids rattled uh, who haven't played a whole lot up there or at all. And, and, but, you know, you've got to take care of business first. What advice do you give the rookies that haven't played in these conditions? What do you say to someone? 
Well, you know, you, first of all, you let them know what the conditions are going to be like. It's going to be loud. It's going to be noisy. Every time you try to get a signal, you're going to have to pay it very close attention. But, you know, you got to put the, all that aside and concentrate on your job and your responsibilities on the football field. All right, coming up here on the Silver and Black Show, Coach Gruden joins Chris Townsend in the film room to recap week one and look ahead to week two at Denver. Here's Carr in third and 13, settles underneath again, keeping in front, breaks the initial tackle and bowls his way ahead Does Jared Cook. He just ran over Akeem Tlaib. Coach, interesting game that you had on Monday Night Football and your tight end had a record-setting day, best performance ever by a Raider tight end. You know, Jared Cook's had a great training camp. He, he really picked the offense up fast. He's so versatile. He can line up in line as a standard tight end. You can put him in a slot. You can line him up outside. And that was the matchup that we really coveted against the Rams. And I think he should have had a lot more yards than he even did. Well, that's ninth most in NFL history in a game, most for the Raiders, but ninth most ever. So take us through it, that, especially on that first drive, that little skinny slant. That was big for you on that scoring drive. Well, as you can see at the top of the screen, we motion Marshawn outside of Cook. Cook's in the slot now. And if you can get him one-on-one -on -one against the linebacker in this case with a two-way go, he is downright nasty. And Derek does a great job giving him an accurate ball that he can run with. He makes LaMarcus Joyner miss, and you see the speed. Not many tight ends can run that route from the slot, let alone run away from the entire Rams secondary for a 45-yard gain. That got the crowd in it, but it's well done. Derek saw the matchup. You see Cook in the slot working against the linebacker, and he does it every day in practice. It was great to see him have this kind of success on Monday Night Football. Great start to the game. And as you said last week, I love the dirt, running through the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I do love the dirt. Some people think I'm nuts. But, you know, as the first half unfolded, we got a quick count, two back set. We ran a play action pass. We used Cooper at the top of the screen to clear out the deep zone. And here comes Jared Cook. Once again, this time he beats a strong safety in one-on-one -on -one coverage to the corner. Derek makes a perfect throw, and that's another big explosive play. And once again, safeties versus our tight end, linebackers versus our tight end, that's a tough matchup. When you got here, did you know what you had in him? We had a pretty good idea, and it didn't take long when we came out on the practice field. I didn't know if Cook was Martavis Bryant or Martavis Bryant was Cook. They're both from a different planet. They're very freakish in terms of their athletic ability, long arm size, they can change directions, and they're smart football players. Let's go to the third and 13. Well, third down and 13 is a tough down in the NFL, and what we have is a no-back set. We, we're trying to get some deep throws to Cooper on a high fade down here, Jordy on a high fade, but the Rams started playing a lot of zone coverage as the game unfolded, so we put Jared Cook in the middle here. He's running an option route. He sits down nice and friendly versus his zone coverage. And, you know, he fight for yardage after the catch. This is what I love yeah. the most. That's like Mark Bavaro did it back yeah. in the day. <laughs> so what you see from Cook is you see him in the slot. You see him lining up wide. He's in line. And you see the effort, the tenacity, the will to win. That's what a Raider's all about right there. So when I think about this, and I think about the tight end can be a quarterback's best friend, how does this, like if you're the Denver Broncos, like you're so concerned about the outside guys, now how concerned are you about Cook after a game like this? Well, hopefully. You know, hopefully they're worried about Jalen Richard, who had eight or nine catches as well. You have to attack not only the personnel of the opponents, you got to attack the structure of their defense. And if you want to play man-to-man, -man, we can choose to go with our receivers. Sometimes it's the man-to-man -man coverage that the tight end gets or the running back gets. If all five eligibles can participate and win their one-on-ones, that's when we're going to be great. And I think about great Raider tight ends. You think about Casper, uh, Todd Christensen, as to actually had the record against the San Diego Chargers back in the day. I mean, Raider history, there's a lot of great tight ends who have played for this organization. Yeah, no doubt. Ray Chester, good friend of mine, still walking around here. We had Ricky Dudley the last time I was here, but this kid, Jared Cook, is as good a receiving tight end as the Raiders will ever have. Well, obviously, it's never easy going up to Mile High and playing against the Denver Broncos, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Your return to Denver, what do you think? Well, it's a tough place to get a win. You said it. they got a great defense. Nothing's changed. They won a world championship with pretty much the same defensive unit they still have. And they've added Bradley Chubb, a very good pass rusher. 
they're a formidable outfit on defense, especially in that noise. But I think Case Keenum is the guy we got to be most concerned with. I think he's a very unheralded quarterback. He's given them some consistency and some playmaking at a position they haven't had since Peyton Manning left. Yeah, what's your, what's your thought on altitude? Well, I, it, it bothers me. Of course, the road stadiums bother me. I get excited on the road. But the altitude, we're going to have to be careful. We're going to have to try to get out there early, uh, get our players acclimated to it the best we can. We don't want to overthink it. But there are some players that individually don't handle it as well as others. So we got we to gotta do the best we can and monitor that. I remember Rod Woodson talking about it, that great interception. Was it like 98 yeah. yards? He said he felt like his lungs were yeah. going to explode. But... This is always an interesting week because it's a great rivalry between the Raiders and the Denver Broncos. This is going to be, when you talk about a hostile environment, this is going to be a hostile environment. It is, and that's something we've tried to sell to our team. We have so many new players. Uh, it's hard for them to have the natural respect for this rivalry that maybe they should. You know, a lot of these players weren't drafted by the Raiders, haven't been here for two or three or four or five years and competed with the Broncos for the AFC Western crown so we got to sell the rivalry we got to make sure our players clearly understand it and uh they're coming off a big win against seattle it'll be loud as you said and uh we've had a good week of practice we'll be ready you know i think a lot of people don't understand this is when we're talking about this you do have a lot of new players you have a lot of new players on offense you have a lot of new players on defense they're learning new schemes this is a process yeah, we're not going to make any excuses for the way we played in the second half last week. We're laying bricks. We're laying a foundation for the future of this team. And it can be painful at times. And it's a punch in the gut, sometimes hard to swallow. But we got the right attitude. We've got some really good veterans. I think we're going to see the emergence of some young players. And I think we're going to continue to improve. We just got to prove it. But I got to tell you, that was electric. Opening night, Monday night football, when you walked out onto that field, it was so loud. And I actually said on the broadcast, it hasn't been this loud for a Raider game since you were here last time. What was that like, you returning as the head coach of the Raiders and Raider Nation just exploding around it? Well, it's is awesome. You know, I thank our fans. And uh, after the opening drive, we went 80 yards and scored. I looked up to heaven above. I thank the Lord. This is the greatest time of my life. You know, I'm with all my best friends in the stands, on the field. We're head seven to nothing. But uh, we got to sustain things much better than we did, and uh, that's what we're after. We're after much more success than we showcased the other night. That air punch you had after that touchdown <laughs> yeah. was incredible. Coach. I get excited for first downs, Chris. I <laughs> get excited all the time. It's a lot of fun. Good luck in week yeah. two. Thanks, man. The Raiders have a wealth of talent when it comes to the running back position. Jalen Richard is one back who has flashed his potential, particularly when it comes to his versatility in this offense. That's why Jalen is our focus in this week's Player Spotlight. Jalen, what is your mindset heading into the 2018 season? My focus, you know, coming into this 2018 year was just, you know, uh, continue to grow and build on my past two seasons and, and just have fun, really. You know, I talk with Marshawn a lot about just having fun with the game. A lot of people, you know, forget and get so hyped up on the game plans and everything and forget to just go out there and have fun. So took a lot off my shoulders and just, you know, back to just playing ball. Nice effort by Rashard. What has been that biggest difference year three for you? Guys used to talk about it when I first came in the league that experience in this league matters. And I see it now, like three years in, I just know different things that I didn't know as a, as a rookie on whether it was how to be a pro or little techniques during the game to like, you know, get releases or just understanding, you know, defensive. Let's rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're expecting your first baby, yeah, a first baby, baby girl. What is this past nine months been like for you? It's been, it's been interesting. You know, uh, I just have a wider eye on, um, you know, just the beauty of like women, you know what I mean? Like just what it, you know, your y'all bodies go through. Um, Thank you I, for saying that, by the way, because yeah. I said two weeks ago, no, and it's yeah, like, you get bigger, you get smaller. I couldn't do it. We, <laughs> we couldn't do it. You know, we weren't made to do it. And um, just to know that, uh, you know, it's, it's a blessing and it's a, you know, it's a creation that, you know, I just couldn't, I can't fathom. So I, had, I got a lot of respect now. You know, I'll be quiet. <laughs> well, you're about to get a different kind of handoff at yeah. like three in the morning. Yeah, three in the morning. Are you ready for that type of handoff? Yeah, I'm ready. I think I'm ready for that handoff. I have my parents uh, and um, my in-laws come in and help a little bit. You know, because obviously, you know, you I gotta, to. I gotta, you know, be able to be 
um, get up in the morning and be fresh, you know, to come into work and, and handle my business this year. But um, I'm excited. So now let's get to Coach Gruden. What has his advice been since he came in in terms of your growth and development and obviously the versatility that we've already seen from you? Really just continue to just, you know, hone in on the details, you know, um, just continue to grow. They know that, you know, I can switch on and off from wide receiver to running back, you know, when I step out there. Uh, the biggest thing he always says to all the running backs is when you get out in the slot, it's wide receiver time. You're not a running back anymore. He tells us that. Cut off the running back switch and turn into a wide receiver. Gets it out quickly, Richard. I've been in um, Coach uh, Eric's ear, the wide receiver coach, mm -hmm. um, EB, just been in his ear on, on little techniques, on certain little routes. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll talk with Coop and get a couple little pointers from Coop. What about Coach Singleton? You mentioned working with the receivers coach, but what advice has he given you? He's really been really good on, on, on pass pro, uh, getting my pass pro right, my punches right. Um, making it more understandable when we go through a pass protection, um, understanding my who I have, the O-line calls. He's a really smart guy, really smart coach, um, and takes it real seriously. But you have to, you know what I'm saying? We got Derek Carr back there, $100 million guy, so we can't let him get touched. So, um, you know, those are the big things that he's focused on with us, uh, you know, in individual, working on our feet, making sure we have our feet underneath us, punching with strength, um, able to move left and right. Because, you know, you'll have these linebackers that some want to bull rush and some want to come and finesse. So um, just understanding all those realms of the game, and, and he's been uh, real helpful to me all year. Working with Marshawn Lynch, what has that been like? No, it's been smooth. You know, uh, Marshawn is Marshawn, man. Uh, he's going to... Uh, you know, he ain't gonna let you get down on yourself. You know, he gonna always talk trash to you. You gotta have a thick skin. You know, I'll talk <laughs> trash back. Uh, but, um, you know, he, he, he's gonna expect the best out of you and you gonna expect the best out of yourself, you know, being around him. Marshawn's out there having fun. So, you know, when you have a guy in your room like that that's just having fun, not worried about anything, it kind of, you know, makes you stress-free, you know? Yeah, it was fun to watch him get pushed in the end zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. he was dragging a guy too. <laughs> Y'all gotta see that, he was like, on one leg, just dragging the guy, guy just holding on for dear life. It was funny. So week two, mile high, division rival. How challenging is that when you go into Denver? It's always challenging when you go into Denver. Uh, a great organization, um, always got some great players. Um, obviously, you got Von Miller mm -hmm. over there. The energy, you know, it's, it's, it's a division rivalry. Uh, we always go in there and, and it's a dog fight, understanding that, you know, last week's out of the door and we got to focus now on a divisional game. And divisional games count, you know, nothing against the last game, but we got to have the division games to be able to, you know, get to where we want to get this year. When you guys talk about Von Miller in the locker room, what's the conversation? Like speed, power, finesse, ball hawk. Um, but we look forward to the challenge. I know the O-line is, is, is looking forward to the challenge and we definitely going to make sure, you know, we're ready for the comp. Uh, they got some talented, you know, pass rushers with Irvin, a guy I played, you know, being with Seattle for a long time, and some of those other guys, are big, strong, long guys that, that rush the passer pretty well. So we got our work cut out for us. Paulie's a very good coordinator. He's a guy that does a great job of uh, pressuring quarterbacks. He's been in top ten the last four years in Cincy, so I'm expecting a uh, hell of a challenge from his defense. You know, he is literally a grinder. Uh, he's back in his studio or his office. Where literally, it looks like a you know a TV set with all the film behind it, but that's actual film that he like stays in there and watches. It's a challenge to get your team ready to play those teams because of his experience and his knowledge and his 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 way with players. So, absolutely, you get fired up playing against guys like that. The Raiders look to get back to 500. Welcome back to the Silver and Black Show. Jim, I want to focus on week one because it really was a tale of two halves. In the first half, the Raiders providing a lot of hope, and then things really started to fall apart there in the second half. But when you look at the penalties, 10 in the first half, just one in the second half. Anytime you're in double digits, though, for over 100 yards, it's unacceptable. Uh, you're in big trouble when that happens. You, you get a big play, it's called back. Defensively, you give up a big play, it gives them yardage, gives them field position. So it hurts you all the way around, but you know, at practice you work on it every day. You're trying to get better and the, the coaches, especially after that first game and all those penalties, were certainly focused on trying to cut down and prevent as many penalties as they can. Well, they're obviously focusing on it in practice, but are you focusing on it as a player during the game? Are you aware of what's going on and how many the team has? I think you are as a player, especially say you gave up three, three sacks last week, uh, something in that 
line. Well, yeah, you're, you're nervous about it, you're worried about it, you try to keep your hands in, uh, not grab a, a, a defender as he's trying to get to the quarterback. Those are some of the things that probably it's hard to shake. I, I don't think there's any doubt. The other guys, you committed a penalty here, penalty there, you know, probably put it behind them and are going to focus on, on the job at hand. Which player this week is going to try and put week one behind them? Who's your bounce back player that you're really looking to step up week two? Well, I think uh, Derek Carr's the guy for me. He's got to, you know, uh, certainly wasn't all his fault, but I think he'll bounce back and, and have a much stronger game this week. But he needs a lot of help from his teammates around him to give him the support, block for him, catch the ball down the field. Those are the kinds of things that will help Derek Carr turn around. That's going to do it for this edition of the Silver and Black Show. Make sure you tune in next week as the Raiders head down to Miami to take on the Dolphins. On behalf of John Gruden, Jalen Richard, and everyone here at Silver and Black Productions, I'm Nicole Zalumis. Thanks for watching.